<laughs> oh, that can be if I'm not careful. But there's one program called this, The Chaser. I know the Chaser. <laughs> and so, yeah, we're attracted to intelligent people. So it says that Krishna is all attractive. Whatever, if you find the most opulent person in this world, the richest, the most beautiful, that's just a spark of Krishna's opulence and pleasure. And uh, beauty, sorry. Renunciation also. And so if we become attracted to Krishna, he's, he's like the root of all happiness. And so if we, if we learn how to reciprocate with the root of all happiness, all wealth, all knowledge, all renunciation, all beauty, then we'll naturally become peaceful. Just like we water the root of a tree or the root of a plant. Do we water the root or the leaves? If you root, water the root, what's going to happen if you just water the leaves? It'll die. We have to water the root. So the root of all existence is Krishna. So we have to water the root. This is the point. And so we'll speak about that in a minute. We'll come back to watering the root. And so when we are bodily identifying, we're going from one body to another. It's called reincarnation. As we create desires through this lifetime, at the end of life, our, we'll have a certain mentality and we'll be certain things we're attached to, like the mother-in-law or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, so that means that, you know, our next body will be a suitable body. I remember actually that happened to me, anyway. No. But, um, <laughs> and so we have to generate a, a particular desire at the time of death, when we leave this body, which will take us to an auspicious situation. Otherwise we go one body after another. And is this okay? Many people say, I don't mind. But generally people are even frightened of that. Who's frightened of taking another body? The thought of taking another body in this world. Any hands going up? I know sometimes, one of them might be. Sometimes we, we're distributing books on the street and somebody may take an interest. What's it all about then? This, this, this. And we start to explain a bit more. Then we get on to, we're not the body, we're the soul. Oh yeah, what? What happens to the soul? Well, after this lifetime, the soul, according to his desires, he gets another lifetime. Oh, no, not another one. <laughs> this is enough. <laughs> Fear of spiritual life. We don't understand it properly. In other words, it is a hard struggle for a lot of people. And sooner or later, everybody finds that hard struggle. And so we, we put a stop to this hard struggle by understanding our spiritual nature and in this very lifetime, learning how to engage in spiritual activities. And how do we, we may not have a desire for that. How do we de develop that desire? This is the point, watering the root. We water the seed, it comes into a plant. And then it bears fruit eventually, it becomes a, a luxuriant plant. So how do we water the, the soul, the seed of the soul in the body? How do we become, how does the soul become fully aware? And this is what we're talking about. This is the, the watering process of mantra meditation, of yoga. This is what yoga means, to awaken the soul. And in this age, particularly, mantra meditation is required. We all have a mantra. At work we have a certain mantra, depending on our job, is that right? Would anyone like to volunteer any mantras that they're using at work? Sorry sir, so what's the point of life then? Just a minute. So we've got no mantras. But yeah, we're using mantras every day. And so there's a mantra, a spiritual mantra. A spiritual mantra means it takes the mind away from material thought. Man means mind in Sanskrit. Tra means to deliver the mind. So <clears throat> a spiritual mantra will take the mind from absorption in material things and place it on the spiritual nature. And this will make the soul happy. And by repeating this mantra, the spiritual realm will become more and more alive for us. So we chant the Maha mantra. Maha in Sanskrit means a great mantra. Most people are chanting mantras to become peaceful. But it, there's a, a greater goal beyond this peace. And this is what we're talking about tonight. It's taking us back to that place where we saw Mr. Fish. He came from the spiritual world. For some reason, he came to the material world. 
And he went through a difficult time. He was wondering, why am I struggling so much? And then at that time, it's when we are ready for understanding higher principles. And so in a short while, uh, are we ready for the... Really? Really now, are we? And so I think 20 minutes, 15 minutes has gone by. Uh, we're going to have a sample, very shortly, of this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. There's different ways to chant. There's Japa meditation where we can chant on our own privately. And we're going to the next stage, which is called uh, Kirtan, where we're chanting call and response. And then Sankirtan means we share it with everybody. So we're going to share it at least with everybody in this room today, some Kirtan. And so if we just meditate on this mantra, this spiritual mantra, we'll start to experience that there's something different about it. We'll experience a taste which is not what we've experienced before. Is that right? It's, it's something which is beyond this material world. And so, I'll t have we time for questions or shall we finish it up? No, no. Okay, so we'll have plenty of time for any feedback from you, any questions uh, after the programme or we're taking something to eat. And so I'll hand you over now to uh, Giri Dali Prabhu. Thank you very much.